Hello and welcome to Security and Secure, hosted by me, Johnny Seifer. This is the Celebrity Mental Health Podcast, where I say it's okay to not be okay. And if you have the same mantra as me, whether you're watching on YouTube or listening on Spotify, Apple Music, or wherever you're listening, click that subscribe button, leave a five-star rating, and leave a review. And let's keep spreading the word, it's okay to not be okay. Now let me tell about my guest today. My guest today is a former Miss Great Britain model, turned maker artist extraordinaire, who runs BrellaLife.com, who's here today to look at the insecurities in the beauty industry. So without further ado, I'm delighted to welcome to Security and it's Gemma Garrett. Hello, Gemma. How are you? Very good, thank you. I mean, I'm literally, uh, you know, it's it's quite an honour to be the former Miss Great Britain model. Um, it's a very prestigious <laughs> lot to have. Well, yes. What I didn't realise when I won Miss Great Britain is that that title stays with you until you die. You never get rid of that title. So, like, when I'm walking around Tesco's or Asa with my mum, you know, and she meets an old friend, I have to remember at one point I was a Miss Great Britain and I have to kind of reflect that. Yeah, so it's a curse also. Yeah, but is it not the same as, like... A James Bond uh, woman, you know, like the one, like the Halle Berry who comes out the pool. Like when you're 90 years old, people are going to go, that's a former Miss Great Britain model. Great. You know, it doesn't matter what you look like. You've got that title. Well, I do think it's a bit harder for women. And I'll tell you why. The girl who was in the first Top Gun, she was asked to come back into the second, the remake. And um, she said that she didn't feel as if she looked like, you know, that part anymore and they they offered her a part like a completely different character uh behind the bar or something and she declined and i totally related to that because you know some days i i will be out with my mom or or with friends and we get talking and then someone and maybe i'm just like this you know just casual and someone says Gemma was a miss great britain now when people say miss great britain they immediately think of a beauty queen of course on stage in the current year. So you can see people going, and that does have a bit of effect because you feel as if you always have to be glamorous or portraying a beauty queen role. But then what happens when you don't dress up? Do you internally feel that people are judging you or is it an external force? I can see people's faces, like I have eyes. I do see people looking and going, oh, because they immediately, their brain goes to a current beauty queen. Mm. Um, then I have to, you know, I backtrack and, you know, I get all fumbly and say, oh, well, it was, you know, 16 years ago, you know, and I feel as if I have to give people that that bit of knowledge almost. It's interesting, isn't it? Because you're right. It's like you have to give the background to the situation, but also you don't want to take anything away that it was 16 years ago and it was such a good coveted award to get. And so you're right with the double edged sword of like you're trying to move on with your life, but also there's an element of your past, which also is important to hold on to. 100% and uh, um, I don't know if you guys have uh, a lot of trolling over there I'm sure the internet is the same everywhere but we actually have a trolling site in Ireland it's a site dedicated to trolling people and you know uh, I, I've never been on it but people send me things about myself and, and someone had, had written once you know is she ever going to let the Miss Great Britain thing die Um, yes I would love to but every time my name is printed in the paper or I'm in an interview and like today, you said a former Miss Great Britain. It just comes to the territory. It's not that I'm trying to cling on for dear life that I was Miss Great Britain. It's just it's always mentioned when my name is mentioned. But the thing is, when you work in the media, I'm a journalist. And therefore, if I've got someone who was in EastEnders 20 <laughs> years ago and they were in it for two years, doesn't matter what they've done, that's the biggest role they've ever had. That's what you're going to hold on to. Same as if you've done Slept Big Brother, I'm going to have to get me out of here, or Love Island. Yes, you might have been eight years later. Olivia Atwood, for example, is a loose woman panelist, but you'll still call her a Love Islander because it's based on the way that the people first knew about that person. And if people first knew about who Gemma Gout was from, from the modelling industry, that's what you're going to be hold on to, no matter what you've done since. 100% like I mean it really doesn't bother me but and we won't try to get into the mind of the minds of trolls because that's just a complete disaster area but I, I'm just saying you know that's going to stay with me until the day I die that title and people don't think of that when they enter these competitions what does that do though so, so for those who are entering those competitions now what's that one bit of advice you want them to think about about having that title attached to them in the future well, I have so much advice for people entering any competition uh, that is solely uh, debated on beauty. My views have been very erratic over the years. What I'd like to make clear today is that it has changed hands from I with Miss Great Britain. I had a terrible 
traumatic experience. And I do think that the people who are running these competitions now will hopefully, but especially the Miss Great Britain, they are more aware of mental health. They're more aware of an aftercare system for each winner, uh, which is lovely to see. And um, that just wasn't the case for me. Talk to me about what happened for you. And remember, you know, they're not here to comment, so no names. And we'll oh. keep it very top line because no one can comment on what you're saying. But this is based on your personal experience. Let's be really clear on that. So what was your personal experience about what was traumatising for you? Well, my personal experience, and I, I still have no... Uh, I. I hold no grudge against these people because I do actually think that they were doing what they thought was best as well. So I don't think that it was, you know, a malicious thing at all. I mean, we're going back just on the cusp of 2007, 2008, before Kim Kardashian was a person, uh, well, not a person, before she was a, a an entity. And all these sports stars, like footballers who have made being strong and healthy and muscly, um, cool and and healthy so we were just coming out of that kind of Kate Moss kind of um very very thin slender model days and um I remember I stood on the scales and I was nine stone one which I should never be I'm a broad girl I'm very sporty I played sport my whole life I have big thighs I'm strong hockey netball player and I should never ever have been that weight for my height I was told straight away, you cannot see nine stone on the scale ever again. So even though I'd won this amazing competition that was about my beauty and personality, you know, there was still stipulations for me. What did they want your weight to be? They never actually gave me a weight, but I mean, it, it was never good enough. It, and this is no attack on them. I just think this is what the media wanted. This is what the world wanted. Social media was just becoming a big thing. And this is what people wanted. It was never, I, I had a personal trainer. I barely ate. I put myself in hospital. Um, I really, really damaged my health. And it was still never good enough. It, it, I was never thin enough. And 2007, 2008, I think was, you know, where lad mags were really popular and there were spin-offs of it. So, for example, Nuts magazine had Nuts TV and you had the page three models becoming celebrities in their own right. And this is way before OnlyFans and being a paid for service. This was just everywhere in the mainstream of people like your Lucy Pinders and your Danielle Lloyds just being the faces of page three and having to go, this is how you need to look. You need to be skinny, you need to be blonde, you need to have big boobs, and therefore you can have your photo taken and be across everything. What was it yeah. like for you coming off that competition with the idea of page three and the lads mags coming in and obviously your size being nine stone. What did that mentally do to you about the way that you looked at yourself and body image? Well, um, shockingly, all my friends, I, I lived in London at the time, but I would fly home very regularly to see my friends at the weekend. And they, they were shocked because I was always a, a curvy girl, like a real womanly Marilyn Monroe shape. So they were shocked and they were really shocked and worried about me and my mental health. What's really surprising to people is people thought that I loved myself, that I was in the front of Nuts magazine, FHM, loaded, name the magazine, I was on it. I was the face of Silverstone race course and TV and I was doing all these different things. And I was the most insecure I've ever been in my life, ever, because the pressure of all these things and then people in your ear saying, you need, still need to be thinner and then it was just the start of the trolling on the internet and then people would give their opinion. And, and I, I understand I put myself out there for that. As much as my year as Miss Great Britain, I think I actually ended up getting 14 months, 15 months. There were so many highs and I don't regret it. I wish I could go back now knowing what I know because there were so many lows as well. Let's look at what you were like at 16 years old, though, in school and go back a little bit. I know it was a couple of years ago. Not that many years ago. You're not old, <laughs> but you know what I mean. You've moved on and you've accepted who you were back then. But that 16 year old Gemma, the beautiful girl at school, how did that how did you fit in into your community in school? Who were you in the class and who were you in the year? And were you that girl of like, this is the queen bee. She's the most good looking one. She's the most popular one. No, I think people maybe had that impression of me but I was still fiercely insecure then um I was bullied throughout school like most people are um and then you know back it back in those days back in the day um you know your mum and dad 
There was no mental health. There was no be kind. Your mum and dad just said, listen, you sort this out in school tomorrow. We haven't got time for this. So I did go back into school and sort it out. So I would say that by standing up for myself, in some people's memory, I could have been a bully, but I definitely wasn't. I I was always very soft hearted, very, very much insecure, but knew that I would have been in more trouble going home saying someone was bullying me than just standing up to it. So school wasn't enjoyable for me. Loads of people say best days of your life. I'm like, definitely not for me. What was it about the bullies that you think was the trigger for them to pick on you? What were you doing? What were you looking like that made them go, I want to pick on her. I'm jealous of her. Because normally it comes from a place of jealousy. Yeah, I think that I always knew I wanted to do something creative. I was obsessed with being a model. Uh, Every model agency told me I was too short. And I maybe told people this, you know, that I went to a modeling agency. They said, no, they said, come back when you're 18. Come, You know, I maybe people knew that that was maybe a dream of mine. Also, I'm going to put it down to, I'm going to put bullying down to being 13, being 14. I mean, you know, what else do you know at 13 and 14? Mm. And I, I grew up in, you know, a very working class family. I went to a nice grammar school, but I mean, you know, you're 13, 14. I don't even blame, I don't even blame people for believing me. And I'm sure, I, I'm sure I wasn't the nicest kid either, you know? So I don't really think that it was because how I looked that much. Maybe some people were jealous of that, but I think it, I think it was just clash of personalities, I would say. Okay, so that was your 90s. Then we're talking about the noughties and your modelling era. Then you kind of go off track and it gets the mid the mid 10s and there's rumours you're going to do Celebrity Big Brother. Obviously, that never materialised. There's also stories about you and Russell Brand in the papers. Moving now to the 20s, where are you at in life and... What does fame, the celebrity culture, all of that world look to you? You looking to go, right, I want to get back onto TV now. I want to be doing Celebrity Big Brother. I want to do The Jungle, Dancing on Ice, et cetera. Or you like, I just want to make Brella Life, which is your website, into a successful business that I can keep monetizing. I think when I was younger, I, I looked up to the, these kind of glamour girls because I thought it meant... Well, fame was, fame was quite attractive to me because I thought it meant being rich being wealthy what I realize now that that's definitely not the case um all those years of maybe chasing fame I was actually maybe just chasing freedom like financial freedom Mm. um know that at the time uh would I do a celebrity uh show now it would need to be the right one I mean it would need to be uh definitely the right one but I don't chase that anymore and funny enough when you stop chasing something like that it's sod's law so many things come in (laughs) And I'm like, I don't, really don't want to do stuff like that anymore. I've done a couple of TV shows here in Northern Ireland about beauty queens. And it's more journalistic kind of views on that. Um, and I would be up for that. But do I want to be famous? No. Do I want to be rich? Yeah. Who doesn't? Who doesn't want to <laughs> be rich? <laughs> uh, final question. Brellalife.com is your website. What can people find out on there? Well, um, I'm now a makeup artist. I work in TV and film. And I find it's very difficult to find good, good luxury products that aren't tested on animals, that are ethically sourced, that are guilt free, um, especially with so much plastic in our oceans. And I mean, the list goes on. So I decided, why don't I just start my own? So I have my own brand, Buella Life, and I also sell other people's brands in there who pass our ethos test. And uh, it's going quite well. So we have candles, we have body creams, we have vitamins we have coffee we have clothes every single thing it's a lifestyle my thanks to Gemma garrett her website brellalife.com is where you can find out more about her go and check up her makeup and go and buy from her because she's an amazing girl and i absolutely love speaking to her if you enjoy skin and skin then please do me a favor if you're watching on youtube click that subscribe button give a thumbs up and leave a comment if you're listening on apple music or spotify leave a five star rating and a review and click that subscribe button and let's keep spreading the word it's okay to not be okay on tiktok at johnny seafoot 92 on instagram at skin skin podcast at johnny seafoot and on x at johnny seafoot is where you can find me i put teasers of all the episodes of all the celebs that i speak to so that you can keep spreading the word it's okay to not be okay until next time i'm johnny seafoot thanks so much for listening or watching until next time thank you and goodbye